Good morning, everybody. I'm Jamie, and um, this morning, let's see this one. Great. I want to share with you an incomplete history of self-directed learning in nine and a half chapters. This should probably actually say an incredibly, pathetically incomplete history. But this is going to be a story about self-directed learning. But by necessity, it also has to be a story about the change from content-based education, the get all this stuff in your head education, to skills-based education, the figure this out kind of education. So without further ado, chapter one, Industrial Revolution. Many of us know, thank you, Sir Ken, that uh, the Industrial Revolution was sort of the driving force behind a lot of our contemporary model of education. You've seen that TED talk, yeah? Oh, yeah, oops. okay. So, um, what, what the industry required was students to graduate with a certain set of knowledge that was gonna make them effective and efficient on an assembly line. This was the beginning of the content-based curriculum. Jumping forward several centuries, I told you this was gonna be incomplete. Okay, so we're at the offices of 3M. The chairman of 3M is a guy named William McKnight, and he favors what he calls educational doodling. What this means is that his tech people are given 15% of their time to work on projects that they're into, things that they're excited about. This is self-directed learning in the workplace. Out of this time come things like post-it notes. Yay! And eventually post-it note art. Yay! So, a few decades further on, Albert Einstein famously says, never memorize something if you can look it up. Never memorize something if you can look it up. Somewhere there's a little bell ringing, signaling the end, the coming end, of the content-based curriculum. A few decades further on, the internet. Woo! Information has never been more accessible, never been freer. It's, there's never been a better time to be a self-directed learner. As Einstein predicted, the content of education is there. What you need are the skills to find it. And then along comes Google. You can find it. And Google are pretty innovative. They also have this thing borrowed on 3M's concept called 20% time, which means similarly that their engineers get 20% of their time to work on things that they're into. Self-directed learning in the workplace. And out of that time, we get things like Google Talk. We get things like Google Translate. We get Gmail. We get over 50% of Google's products at a certain point in time. Google do pretty well out of those things. Yeah. And they're not the only ones. In a call center in the US, a manager gets a bright idea. She figures what she's going to do is she's going to give each of her employees one hour a week. And in that hour, they can work on projects to make the call center more effective, more efficient, better place to be. During that time, she sits down in their chair. She takes their phone calls. She calls it the genius hour. Now, Dan Pink, motivational research guru. He reads about this and he blogs about it. Angela Myers, famous for her own genius-based projects, reads Dan Pink's blog and she tweets about it. In British Columbia, a couple teachers read the tweet and they decide to give it a try. They decide to kick off Genius Hour in the classroom. This is a new form of self-directed learning in the classroom. They start up a wiki and people all over the world start taking it on. Now, with the rise of mobile computing, <laughs> the idea that you don't even need to be sitting at your computer anymore to access all the content of education. It's there in your pocket all the time. The idea that education is about getting that content in your head becomes a total anachronism. It is an open book world. And with the rise of social networks, it's an open network world. There's so much information at your disposal all the time but the idea of filling your head with it becomes an educational absurdity. So, <coughs> a little while ago I learned a new word. Would you like to learn it? Yes. 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 Okay, hoitagogy. <laughs> this is where I think we're going. So, pedagogy literally means to lead the child. Hoitagogy is about self-directed learning and the skills for learning. So, this is what I believe, and this is what I hope. That in the future, when we're talking about learning, we're not talking about 
20% of your time, or an hour to be a genius. We're talking about wittagogy, we're talking about the skills for learning, we're talking about the self-direction of learning. This is what I believe should be at the core of education going forward. Thank you.